Brother Jorge Four. Brazilian ex-Satanist comes to Christ. Saved to the uttermost. Part 4. I looked for one of the spirits in particular, inside the house, outside, and finally saw him at the gate. I asked him to help me get my father out of the house so that I could carry out the order given to me. For the first time, this spirit showed me that he had limits. He told me that he could not touch my father. I was pressurized, I risked not carrying out the order of the spirits. I had to take my gun to kill my father because I had to do my ritual at a specific time. I approached my father with my gun. My wife saw me. My father faced me and told me that he was not afraid of me. He started throwing sentences at me, I am not alone, I have Christ with me. May the blood of Christ bind you. May the blood of Jesus immobilize you. I was paralyzed. My brain was working, but my body wasn't responding. With great difficulty I looked for the spirits to help me. Through the window, I could see them in the distance. My father walked towards me, he put his hand on my shoulder. At that moment my body started to tremble. He started to pray, My Jesus, whom I serve, thank you because you revealed to me that you were going to save my son. Save him, transform his life, for the honor and the glory of your holy name, Amen. I found my movements, I bent down to pick up my weapon. I headed for the house of the spirits and there was panic. They allowed me to cancel everything because they too were risking the fire of God at that time. The spirits were even more afraid than me. So I called all my collaborators in order to cancel the whole chain of work necessary for the planned sacrifice and the team that had to be present, that is to say all the wizards of my land. There was a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of dissatisfaction to deal with. It was the start of the fight. When I returned to the living room, my father was with my daughter. They were busy chatting. I thought maybe it was a good time to kill him since he hadn't seen me and so he wouldn't say any powerful words. I grabbed my gun, hidden behind a column in the house when a giant being appeared having huge arms and a very developed torso. I immediately hid the weapon. I was surprised, shocked, anguished to see one of the most gigantic beings that I had been allowed to see. But I summoned some bravery to confront him, perhaps out of wit's ends. I told him that no one could enter my home without identifying himself. At this point my father asked me who I was talking to. I answered him, I am talking to this guy who got between you and me. After all this uproar, the guard entered the living room. He asked me, boss, what's going on here, what's going on? I answered him, that I want to know who is this man in the living room. The guard answered me that he sees only my father and my daughter. I understood that no one else saw him, so that was the magic of Christians. I calmed down, I acted as if nothing had happened. As a famous wizard, I was very combative. I didn't let myself be impressed by the magic of others. I waited. Later, my father was in the bathroom. A spirit whispered in my ear that it was a good time to kill my father. So I was waiting for him behind the door, ready to kill him. When my dad opened the door, this giant appeared first. I was speechless, my father who knew nothing of what I was seeing, asked me why I was waiting for him in front of the bathroom. No, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. My son, Jesus is with me. I see him, I went to my room. I got up at dawn, hoping my father would be alone. It must have been 3.30 a.m. I went to my father's room, who was snoring. I closed the door. I checked under the bed, no one. I opened the cupboards to see if anyone was there. I checked everywhere, no one. I grabbed my gun thinking, you will never again be able to disrupt my activities and my occult world. Despite the fact that he is my father, I was faithful and had given my soul to the spirits. My father had caused tremendous damage to them. Just as I was about to shoot, the giant arrived. He appeared sitting on the bed. He stood up very slowly, staring at me. 
Then for the first time he spoke to me, what do you want with him? Nothing. I fled to my room. A few minutes later one of my spirits joined me. I think this giant will end up killing me. You have to take care of it, I'm just human. No, it's up to you. The next day I tried several more times to eliminate my father. In all I tried 19 times, without success. I would now like to share a passage from the Bible before continuing, Luke 8 26 28 and they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. 27 and when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils long time, and wore no clothes, neither stayed in any house, but in the tombs. 28 When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, you Son of God Most High? I beseech you, torment me not. Luke 8 38 39 Now the man out of whom the devils were departed sought him that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, 39 Return to your own house, and show how great things God has done to you. And he went his way, and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done to him. After a few days my father returned home, nothing could disturb me now. I summoned all the leading wizards for the ritual again. The invitations having been sent, I took my daughter shopping. I thought it was her last day, I wanted to be nice to her. My wife was also present. I told them that in the evening the two were to accompany me to a party. In reality, it was to kill them. Around 8 p.m., my wife and my daughter were in the car. In the car, I felt more and more anguished and remorse. I looked at my daughter and thought I was a monster, an animal. Yet I had no way out, I can't disobey orders. I was to lead them to the large wizarding center. It was a big center. On the road, there was a kind of traffic jam. A security man approached each vehicle. When he approached ours, he asked us to be patient and to drive slowly because there is a congress of Christian youth. There were people there selling Bibles, books, popcorns, drinks. When we passed near them, my daughter asked me for some popcorns. Popcorns, my daughter, but we had dinner a short time ago. Dad, it doesn't cost you anything, please buy me some popcorns. I parked the vehicle. When it was time to pull the handbrake, I thought to myself that I was the most monstrous man in the world. I was going to kill my own daughter and my wife in a few minutes or hours. I wondered if I shouldn't rather kill myself instead. At that moment a spirit spoke to me asking me to hurry. I approached the popcorn stand, the young man asked me to wait a bit. I waited for him to restart the machine while the movie of my life was being played in my mind. I weighed 57 kilograms, I was addicted to four types of drugs, I had to inject heroin in the foot, otherwise, I could not fall asleep. I was exhausted and winnowed by the self-inflicted vicissitudes of life. I had court trials scheduled for hearing, including for homicide. Do you think the devil is protecting you? He only protects you for a while, until the day he lets you bear the consequences of the acts he himself has requested. In reality, I was a wreck, a robot, I couldn't stand life anymore. What a rotten life. There I had to add to my heavy burden, that of taking the life of my family. Nearby, I heard the praises of Christians, I heard the songs and the lyrics. I paid attention to the words. It was about fatigue, weakness, and Jesus helped to get us up. These words made me feel good for a moment, but I thought it was an illusion. But at the same time, I wanted to believe it. I projected myself into these words imagining that Jesus could really take this burden away from me. I felt a freshness, a relief. I enjoyed it, I loved this feeling. I called my daughter to listen to. I told her, these people sing so well. I don't know these songs, but I listened to the lyrics. I launched into a speech to explain the different voices to her, soprano, tenor, etc. She smiled, she was amused when I waxed lyrical about their singing. 
There she said to me, These people sing well because they sing all the time. They are Christians and are from the same church as grandfather. It doesn't have me anymore. I wanted to leave. A friend of my father recognized me, greeted me, and insisted that I stay a little while. But I didn't want to. One of my sisters lived 150m away. I decided to go there to avoid the guy because a spirit asked me not to discuss with this Christian. I left the popcorns with my daughter and I left. When I rang the doorbell of my sister's house, something strange happened. The door would not open. Smoke appeared out of nowhere. I was wondering what I was seeing when I saw a small flame and out of there, came a voice that sounded familiar to me, that voice also seemed to know me very well. Today you will meet your God. Who are you? If you are a spirit, I can find you. Show up if you want to chat quietly. I am the Lord of Christians, your life will be transformed from today. When he presented himself like this, at the time I was thinking of everything from the point of view of magic. For me, the Christians had their magic and I mine. I used to welcome the spirits of other lands. When you are a sorcerer you can be interested in everything and practice all religions because they all belong to Satan, apart from true Christians. However, I didn't have permission to meddle with Christians. So I believed that it was the magic of Christians, the witchcraft of Christians. I tried to run away. I ran, crossed the street, I almost got run over by a car. At one point a spirit that I crossed asked me why I was running like this. I told him what I had seen and heard. He confirmed to me that it was the magic of Christians. It's the magic of Christians, Christians do magic against people, they did it on you. How is it possible? I decided to take revenge on this spell. I decided to wait until the end of their meeting to find all the people who knew me and who potentially had prayed against me by sending me their Christ. I wanted to start with my father's friend. I was waiting for him until the last one came out. I didn't see him. Someone asked me who I was looking for. I gave the name, but everyone told me he was gone. He had passed in front of me, probably the Lord made him invisible to me. I went to his house. Face to face I threatened him. I told him that I was going to destroy him and kill him. He started to pray, and there I saw him catch fire. I thought it was me who burned him with my threats. When I wanted to approach him to check why he was still standing, I received a blow from above. This blow really knocked me out. I thought I was dead. I was all the more afraid because my guides and protectors were not in this place. The Christian who caught fire without burning explained to me that it was an angel who had struck me. I asked him why there was fire on him. He told me it was the fire of the Holy Spirit. The flame that I saw was blue. He began to say words to me that I had never heard before. If the angel didn't kill you, it's because God has a plan for you. Jesus loves you, no matter what you are, no matter what your past is or what you've done. The most important thing is that you have repentance, you must humble yourself before God. Humble yourself before Jesus that you want him to save you. Tell him that you want to change your life, you will be detached from your bonds, and you will be happy. This word, happy echoed in my body. All my life, I have run after happiness without finding it. If I became a Christian, I would know happiness. Christ will give you his peace, he is the Lord of peace. I knelt before this Christian, if you're Jesus who set this fire on you, the one who protects you so much, accepts me in turn, if he can forgive my sins, and forget my past, then I want to be happy and protected like you. Yes, I wish to become a Christian. That evening I accepted Jesus. He went to get someone to take me to the pastor. The pastor laid his hands on my head, praying with strength and authority, asking Christ to untie all my chains. At that moment, the turban that I was wearing on my head came off, the tattoos on my neck fell off, the rings that I had jumped out of my fingers by themselves. I was very afraid to see these things. I wanted to run away, the pastor held me back. 
He explained to me, the chains of sin have fallen off you, you have become a new creature. You are from now on a citizen of heaven, washed in the blood of the Lamb, redeemed, justified. Christ paid your price. It must have been 9.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. someone went to bring my wife to me. At that time I was exhausted, two men were holding my arms on either side. I had a lot of emotions, but I was holding back from crying, at least that's what I thought. In fact, someone pointed out to me later that I was crying. There I said to myself, that I had really changed, I felt like someone else, I was a Christian. My wife, touched by what she saw, also asked to be a Christian. We hugged each other, in tears. My daughter was there too. She confessed to me that she often went to her grandfather's church and that she had even sung in the choir before. She asked me for permission to no longer hide to go there. I answered her, yes, my daughter you can go to church. God saved my family and me. All this time God has worked tirelessly in my life, to thwart the plans of Satan and set in motion his plan for me. At that time I was no longer thinking of the brotherhood of wizards that was waiting for me late that night for the sacrifice of my family. My eyes opened, I began to see and hear differently. I wanted to hear the words of these Christians. I wanted more, I thirsted for God. When we got home, there was a terrible explosion outside the door. I had previously dedicated my house to the spirits and to Satan. There was therefore a confrontation of spirits. I stopped dead in my tracks and held my daughter in my arms. A spirit watching us from the house asked me who the giant person was with us. When he said that, I was overjoyed because I too had received the protection of an angel like the other Christians. My wife asked me what was going on. I couldn't answer her. This joy made me brave. I entered my house. I told my wife that I was going to burn the statues and all the objects of magic and witchcraft so that the Jesus of Christians would come and live there. She told me it was not necessary as the pastor would come and pray the next day anyway, but I felt deep inside that I had to burn all these things. We couldn't just pray to chase away the spirits and keep occult objects. They had to be burnt. The house was very big, I had two swimming pools. At one point I heard noises coming from the swimming pools as if monsters were there. I knew what spirits they were, snakes and dragons. I told myself that they were coming to kill me, I was afraid. But immediately I remembered the phrases Christians used to say to me when I wanted to attack them, the blood of Christ is mighty. I too repeated this phrase, I called the blood of Christ. When I saw the spirits stop, I took more courage. I shouted louder, they finally disappeared. My wife saw it all. I killed the three snakes and all the cats I had at home. I threw them, burned them, I cried the blood of Jesus all the way through. I burned the magic books, inaccessible books, very expensive books that few wizards can buy, some cost over $100,000 books signed by Satan's own hand. Books that don't burn and don't get wet. They are immortal books that span the centuries. But tonight crying out to the power of the name of Jesus, those books burned down. I saw thousands and thousands of spirits fleeing from my house. All, of all categories, I saw them leave. Some threatened me. In particular, the one with whom I had made the pact, the one with whom I made the agreement to sell my soul. He told me that I belonged to him. He reminded me of the sacrifices and the ritual of that moment. He asked me to look at my left hand, because the day I sold my soul to him, for that, among other things, I had to bite my left hand until it bled. I replied that my name was no longer in their records, my name was now only in God's book. He asked me to stop what I was doing. He told me that if I put everything back in place and bought everything that I had burnt again, he would forget what I had done. I'm not gullible. I've seen what he did to wizards in such a case before. I didn't intend to be fooled, which gave me even more courage to assert myself and get rid of them. In these cases we must not hesitate any longer, 
we must give ourselves entirely to Christ. I chased him and everyone who was still left from my house. All of my tattoos were gone from my body. The dragons and snakes as well as the protective spirit, the Virgin Mary, that had been tattooed on my body, all of that miraculously disappeared. I was exhausted that night. I sat down and I looked up to the sky. I saw a whole host of angels of God. I was in ecstasy. I said to myself, angels, angels, they all smile in the same way, they look very similar. What beauty, they are magnificent. I have never seen that. At that moment I heard my wife screaming at such a force that I had to shut her mouth. She hadn't seen the spirits go but she saw the angels. I told her, calm down, don't be afraid, we are having a vision. It is a vision that comes from God. Calm down, control yourself. It must be said that I was used to supernatural things. This vision allowed me to understand that everything was over now. My house, my family now belong to God. I am still with my wife. Today, we have a normal life. Luke 15:10. Likewise, I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one repentant sinner. End.